All right, let's do this. Hello, everyone. Today, I want to work on items and item slots and maybe even inventory. Uh, off stream, I've done a little bit of optimization work because I noticed that um, if we have a lot of ta a lot of chunks, then our performance was tanking, and a lot of that was caused by uh, the fact that our chunk boundaries were being recalculated every time. So I've changed this to a different mechanism, where chunk boundaries, um, and I'm talking about the uh, axis aligned bounding boxes. Um, that these are no longer recalculated every frame, but instead cached and only recalculated if the chunk uh, actually moved, if the grid it's inside actually moved. So that's um, a bit of a performance uh, win. Today I want to work on items, because I, I don't like working on the same system too long. I like to have a bit of a variety. Yesterday I worked on tile metadata. Um, we got the backend uh, done pretty much. So we now have uh, in our foreground and background uh, buffers. Let me just show them. We now have these unsigned int32 buffers instead of the u short buffer that we uh, used to have. So we are now storing unsigned ints, which are 32 bits. And we used to store unsigned shorts, which were 16 bits. So we're now storing double the amount of information um, for two reasons. Uh, one of those reasons is to be able to uh, store a little bit of metadata about the state of the tile. And the other reason is to support uh, more types of tiles. So this way we can be absolutely, well, 99.9% .9 sure that we will never ever run out of tile ID numbers. So in my previous stream, I had a lot of uh, code to convert from these, um, yeah, what should we call it, a, a tile state ID. I made a struct for this, a tile state ID struct, which is basically just a uint, like you can see here. And it has a few uh, few methods to convert between this number and an actual tile type ID or to the meta value. As you can see, the there is a little sanity check here. <coughs> ensure that metadata can not be any higher than 256 or rather it should be below 256 this uh, fits exactly into uh, 8 by 8 bits which is one byte i could have used byte here but then well it makes things a little bit more annoying when you have to do a lot of uh, copying and calculations and stuff. So I chose to uh, put a uint here. Just makes everything a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we did yesterday. Um, of course, we had to change uh, a lot of systems to deal with this new way, uh, way of to deal with this new way of of working. Let me just show this. 
Uh, yeah. So here we used to have just uh, use shorts, and right now we are still getting. Um, uh, well, we're still getting a number from the buffer, but now we are casting it to a tile state ID. Which is basically, uh, yeah, which is basically as the same uh, backend uh, tile state ID just has single uint as, as a field. So that should be very efficient, if I'm not mistaken. And then we can use these uh, property methods to actually uh, calculate the, the tile ID and the meta value. But we don't need the meta value just yet because I haven't implemented anything for um, rendering tiles based on meta value yet. I still need to do that sometime. But that sometime will be later. So that that's what we worked on uh, uh, yesterday. And as I told uh, today, I want to work on items and item slots and maybe even player inventory. It, it just depends on how far we get. And uh, if I don't make too much mistake, too many mistakes, um, we're going to have to register our items somehow. And we're also somehow going to have to convert between blocks and items and, and stuff like that. So this uh, this could be kind of complicated. So let's see, where do I want to start on this? Um, yeah. Right now I'm just putting a lot of stuff in, in just game directory. But eventually I'll just move them to more appropriate directories. It's, I find it difficult to uh, design a directory tree from, from, uh, from the start. So what I like to do is just... Uh, make my classes and implement basic functionality and then if i notice that there are certain patterns occurring then i'll put them in their own folder or their own namespace and stuff um yeah item Then we should also have a class called item block. Those are then items that are so blocks. I try not to use inheritance too much. Um, there may be a way to do this without inheritance. Maybe. Uh, maybe we can could actually just say something like item 
dot has block or get block. Like if it has a block, then it returns a block, and otherwise it returns zero. That way we won't need inheritance. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it would be useful to separate them into two two things. So, what would an item actually need? Also, going to have to at the item stack. Item stacks will actually hold, uh, they will be the actual instances of items that you can actually manipulate in your inventory. Item will be more like uh, a definition for one type of item. So, there should probably be only one item object for every type of item game. Yeah, it might be might be more useful to actually start from the item stack. So an item stack has um, an item. add some default properties here uh, it has an, a quantity of items and yeah we could decide to use a, a byte or a u short or something if we decide that an item stack can have a maximum of 64 items or so just like in uh, some other game, <laughs> but you know, let's just make it an, in, an unsigned int for now. At least the quantity can never go below zero, that's something we know. Um, another thing we might want is uh, some kind of method to render the item stack. Let's see, how do we want to do this? Um, oh yeah, we also have um, a meta value, 
for example, well, you could also store that in the quantity, but it might, yeah, it might not be exactly exactly the right way to do it. It's probably nicer to keep keep them separate. So this is a meta value. It can basically store some number that is relevant to this item, this item stack. So for example, if you have a weapon uh, with durability, then you could use uh, the meta field for the durability of the weapon. could also call it a damage value. Maybe if you if you have some kind of tool, <coughs> some some kind of tool with different uh, different modes, like uh, something like a uh, sonic screwdriver. <laughs> that you can do all kinds of different things with, you can turn on and off and stuff, then you could use that meta value again for that. But then of course you cannot use, use the meta value for something like durability. Um, how do I want to do this? I want... You will need some kind of way to get an icon or something. It will use the item and its own values to produce some kind of, yeah, I don't know, how sh should we really let item stacks handle their own rendering? I don't know. Perhaps. What did I want to do? Not entirely sure how I want to do this yet. Let's see, Unity has a sprite class, right? It has a lot of, a lot of annoying stuff. Maybe I should make something like, something like this. Simple sprite, thing we will define later. something like this so based on the item quantity and the meta value maybe 
tax. Of course, doesn't exist yet, so let's just ignore this for now. Maybe we can have it return some kind of simple sprite based on those values. For example, if it's a tile with a, uh, if it's a block with tile vari uh, a tile with variations, then based on the metadata, you might want to choose one of several tile variations and make an icon for that. And of course, the icon may get called relatively often, so might actually have to cache that. Um, something like this, maybe. Of course, does not exist yet. So, if simple sprite will contain a reference to a texture from a texture atlas and a rectangle, then we should be able to simply uh, render. Icon based on that. Of course, we could also just use Unity's uh, sprite uh, functionality, but I'm thinking that's a lot more power than we need and might also use a lot more memory than we need. We don't really care where our icon comes from, as we can get it somehow. What the item does to to get the icon, I don't really care about. Really. So. 
So yeah, I think this might be a very good baseline. You know what, I'm going to remove item block. I think I would rather do it like this. Item. Should have something called get icon. Of course it has not been implemented yet. Now what if you do for blocks something like uh, something cool is a block what do we want to call this? Using the word block instead of tile. Um, so if it has a Thing like this, maybe. Of course, we need to define simple sprites. Yeah, I think I'm going to use inheritance anyway, after all. Yes. I think that going to be very different. Item tile, I should name it.
where do I want to put this? Uh, So I'm going to make a simple sprite class which contains the bare minimum that is needed. Maybe we can actually do something like this. Um, wait, I think I know what to do now. Yeah, so I have a very simple struct called Simple Sprite, which contains a UV and a reference to a texture. Sprite is located. Let's just make a simple constructor. Let's make this read only. We'll make it immutable. Don't you? Okay. You know what, I think I do not want to cache this uh, because If you do it like this, then you can have stuff like uh, sprite animations. 
So maybe if you have a very special type of item, you might want it uh, to loop through several frames of uh, of sprites. Based on time, or may maybe based on quantity or meta or whatever. Or even on tags. Icon. Now for regular items, um, I, th I think simply storing a UV and XDR would be enough. So could just have a simple sprite. <coughs> of course, we're going to make this virtual. So if we ever have any uh, strange, uh, strange types of items, then they may do something different. I wonder how other games handle this. So one other thing that we need to deal with is uh, a max quantity. For example, in uh, in Minecraft, you can only have stacks of 64 at most. Perhaps it's because they use a byte for their quantity, or maybe not, I don't know. Still need to think about how I, how I want to do it. Maybe I want larger quantities, but I kind of like how they did it in Minecraft. In other games like Space Engine, uh, they do not have uh, a maximum quantity. Instead, uh, how much stuff you can carry is based uh, on the weight of the materials. Um, so yeah, you can have either very large stacks of a material that weighs very little, or you can have a very small stack of a material that weighs a huge amount um, <coughs> uh, 
we have a very small stack that that's super dense and fills up your entire inventory uh, immediately. So that's basically two different ways to uh, to deal with it. Right now, I, I'm deferring this decision until later when I'm a little bit more. Uh, when I know a little bit, bit more clearly what I want to do exactly. But using a byte as my max quantity uh, might be uh, might be a good idea, of course. Um, everything, every little bit that helps in networking would be a good, uh, good thing. Um, yeah, so every item has a max quantity. Of course, for stuff like uh, stuff like weapons and other things that might receive damage, such as armor pieces or something, they don't want uh, stuff to stack. So might be good for those kinds of items to set the max quantity to 1 then you won't be able to stack them you'll have um, one item, st item stack for each and every single um, instance of that item in your inventory Maybe I should have done a little, little bit more design work up front. Because right now I find it very difficult to estimate um, what is exactly required. Let's look at the tile class. Yeah, this one has a sprite UV. Maybe I'll. Maybe I should just. Uh, this also interesting. I can. Thank you. But yeah, we're, we're going to have to use a human name for this one. Every item will need a human name. What else is there? So basically every item has a name and an icon. I guess I'll name it icon. I oh, yeah, had this one got replaced by this thing. Or oh, actually, wait. We can do the same thing as the uh, tile class by storing a few different kinds of rects So if we store them separately, then I think this one will have much more flexibility. So if if um, if we do something like uh, something similar to over here, like we did with this one, then we'll be able to store to have different variations of uh, items. Just like we have different variations of blocks.
which I guess is needed because um, every block will also have a a corresponding uh, a corresponding every tile will also have a corresponding item tile instance to represent that block in your inventory. Now I can just return right that contains an UV data and the icon texture. Uh, This is, of course, only relevant if it has more than one uh, uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, this this looks very nice. Uh, so if we construct an item, then we will need a human name. Maybe we'll set all of those to the properties. That's also a possibility, of course. That might actually be the best idea. So we have an item stack that at least seems like it should work for very basic purposes. We have an item class, which also probably contains what we need, bare minimum. We can get icons. Okay. Now let's take a look at item tile. Override get icon. This will contain uh, a tile. Tiles, or of course it has a tile. Um, yeah.
what else did we have? Human name, max quantity. Um, yeah, that's probably something that should be set outside of here. UV icon texture. Now let's take a look at main because maybe it's edit and the edit system. Because we had some code in there that we might want to uh, move over here. Tower registry, log, log, contextual, icon, UV, tower, icon, UV. Best is being set. This game mode. Okay, yeah. Going to have to move that somehow. That I can Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if I if I should indeed put a reference to the tile atlas in the tile or in the item, or if maybe I should not do that. I probably should not, because that would make it difficult to uh, to serialize stuff. Or actually, these tiles will never be serialized, so it doesn't really matter much. It's the item stacks which will be serialized.
cave. So that's now that's just the registry. So we're keeping some tiles. And now we also want to have items. I'll probably want to rename the registry to something more generic. Maybe just simply registry. by index Eric. So the idea is, it, is that if we have access to the registry, then we should be able to just find and look up IDs and items the other way around and stuff like that. So if we register a tile, we should also register an item. Do I want to do it like this? Yeah, I want to do it like this. Um, and
item by Maybe I should just use integers here, but I don't know. Depends on what's more efficient. Maybe I'll do some profiling sometime. It's not really that important right now. Maybe we'll use another atlas for items.
for now let's just use the same atlas getting a little bit complicated <laughs> What if we can just, if we can take just some of the pixels in the uh, tile texture, so only the region that contains the actual uh, pieces that we are going to use as the icon. Maybe we can, if we can do that, then after that we can have a smaller texture which is only the icon and then we can use the same method we used on the tau atlas to add the small texture to the item atlas or something like that <laughs> Get pixels. Or oh, texture data. Okay, yes. 
So I believe get pixels and set pixels might be what we need. Oh, that only works if. Uh, of course, that's only gonna work if. If there is a. We cannot rely on the the icon to be the same size all the time so copying pixels probably not a good way to best way to go ah this is tricky let's see how the hell do i want to do this
Okay, I think this is where we need to actually set the UV for the for the item item belonging to the tile. Mm. Probably have to somehow move this over to the dial registry. All these calculations for the dial variants.
Alcatel. Dat al render data gemaakt. Oh, you need some attention. Oh, <laughs> there you are. What was I doing? This method is way too long and complex. I really need to break it down before I can move it over. Uh,
let's see. This is unrelated. Okay, this should be a lot more manageable.
Now we should be able to remove this without any issues. It's public.
if I am right, then how I should I should have items which contain the proper UVs. Of course, now we need to find some way to render those items. Let's see if everything still works as it should. No. Oh yeah, we need some more those things. He was not present in the dictionary. Oh, of course.
Oh, my world is still set to be huge. Seems like it still works. All the UVs are still correct. Now that icon knife UV is not being set yet.
Oh, Mark, this one is obsolete. Because uh, at first we had a simple list of tiles which we iterated through, and now we're going to replace that with a list of item stacks. Or at least items. These items will then contain the reference to the block. Uh, or rather the tile. So this one is something that I think we no longer need. But I'll keep it in here just so I can have a working build for now. <laughs> Commit this. And now instead of going through all the tiles, every frame that the GUI gets drawn, I'm going to put some item stacks in a list um, which reference these tiles, these items. That will be like Something similar to the inventory that we will eventually need to have. Come on, man. Why are you being such a... Such a troll, Visual Studio? We might want to change this into a property token, but that's something for later.
I was still lacking the get item method in the registry. We'll have to uh, can we not actually add a new one of those? No. It's already in there. This should work. Hello, how's it going? Oh, hello, uh, AFAC. Is that how I pronounce it? It's going fine. It's a little bit boring. I'm uh, working on uh, implementing items and item stacks. And I think I've got the very basics of items working, but I haven't been able to really test it very well yet. So right now I'm working on grid editor system. So we're going to try to uh, iterate over a list of item stacks instead of uh, simple raw uh, raw blocks, uh, raw tiles from the registry. It's all quiet. Get rid of this. Dot count. This. Stack, stack, false, items I get them. Uh, 
the one we wanted, right? Yes. <coughs> That's a simple sprite. I can just do this on account of the UV uh, texture here. No longer needed. If everything works correctly, then I should still have a working pop bar. I don't see any difference, so it must be working correctly. Unless it's using the old code or something. So one other thing I could do is maybe set this thing to serializable. this to serialize fields and I should be able to see them in the list not that I will actually be able to see any data in them Yes. Now maybe I can do something like draw a label Maybe we'll be able to read the open name from the item stack. 
if I have a, have a label anywhere, maybe I should use minus. It's kind of confusing when you're working on in GUI space. The zero starts at the top left, and if you're working in most other coordinate systems, the origin point zero zero starts at bottom left. That's quite annoying sometimes. But as long as you're aware of it, it's not really such a big deal. Problem is, I still can't see anything that looks like a label. Where the hell? So now let's just do some testing here to make sure that it's not the wrong string or something, or maybe an empty string. We know for sure that it's something to do with this code might not be working appropriately. Still don't see a label. Could it be because we are in a window? We overflow the window then. Won't, uh, yeah. It seems to be the problem. Stone, concrete, dirt, grass, gravel, sand. Yeah, that's where it's at. Stuff is working. I now have a list of items, specifically item stacks. And an item stack is simply an object containing a reference to an item and which has a quantity value and a meta value and which may eventually contain a few tags for all the weird stuff that an item stack may have and we are able to get the icon and render it and yeah that's good i like that Uh, and I think I'm going to take a break here. Did I commit everything? And yeah, this is not important. That is important. Uh, this is important. Just get rid of the serialized field thingy. Uh, list of 
my turn stacks dead directly accessing the tiles from Okay, so I'm going to take a break now. I'll probably be back in about an hour. So yeah, I uh, I hope that was interesting. Um, uh, I guess what what will I do after this? Um, yeah, maybe work on some stuff like inventory. Yeah, inventory. So yeah, I think I'll work on that after the break. So I'll be switching to break time, then I'll be back in one hour. <laughs>